Hey Felix fam, what's poppin'? Welcome back to another episode of Amazon Finds for Airsoft. Today we're diving into our top 10 list of incredible gear you can snag on Amazon. But before we jump into that, we talk about Extraction 2 and the gear used in the movie. Phoenix Feather Airsoft and I do gear breakdowns for movies and series and talk about my Amazon finds for Airsoft. I work on my gear basically constantly and I think I have some good experience of what works and what's helpful so you can save some headache and some time. Let's go. Since I began playing Airsoft I ordered myself a lot of different stuff from Amazon. Some of my most valued possessions actually are my airframe helmet off of Amazon. Over the years I accumulated a lot of cool bits and pieces that can be super helpful on the Airsoft field. So for your kit and for your gear bag I'm gonna get you something. Especially if you are a beginner in the airsoft world Amazon seems to be the easiest way to get your first loadout and your first gear. I don't deny that. I did it myself and got quite some cool stuff from there but there's also a lot of crap on there that will maybe fail you down the road. So take my tips and experiences and find some good stuff. First off, for my airsoft beginners, make sure to not buy a $100 replica from Amazon. They will for sure fail on you and you will not have as much fun on the airsoft field. Check your local airsoft dealer and maybe save a little more to get something more decent and be happy with it. For example, if you are new and you want some inspiration from Netflix's Extraction 2 to build a cool loadout like Chris Hemsworth, I have you covered. The action was absolutely insane and the gear they rocked was like top notch. Not so much, maybe. The internet had some opinions on the gear and what could have been cooler and more rare. It was not like the series SEAL Team, if you know that, which had unreleased cry pants back in the day and were rocking brand new iPro no one had ever seen. So they had super rare stuff. I guess we finally have to start a petition that Extraction 2 has to be a prime exclusive so the costume department can shop on their own platform. What we're going to do today. But anyway, let's talk about the equipment used by the main character and show you some equivalent gear you could grab on Amazon if you are interested in recreating the look or get some inspiration. All the affiliate links that help me personally out are down in the description. Starting with the plate carrier the Black Ops mercenary Tyler Rake is wearing, it's actually a 511 plate carrier and could be found on Amazon. Uh, it's currently actually unavailable, probably because they're pushing a new model that was also featured in the Amazon Prime movie The Terminalist with Chris Pratt. Maybe I should do a gear rundown uh, here too, as it seems that they ordered their props off of Amazon. Uh, this item was like the most discussed on the internet as fans found it a little bit basic. It's not that it's like bad, but it's somehow the low end of the mid-shelf tactical gear. It's not the coolest in my opinion, but it is for sure gets the job done as it accepts mid and large plates and would be available all around the world. So it makes sense in the movie world. So it's great if you are on the budget and only we as basement dwellers really care about the tactical aspect, to be honest. I doubt it um, that there was given more thought than 511 actually being the sponsor of the movie. And that's why they chose this plate carrier. Then coming to the magazine pouches, uh, he uses elastic pouches first. He uses like some bank robber rig, which means they are also open on the bottom. Uh, and then later he uses like closed ones. Uh, here I didn't find the exact match, but some closed ones that basically work the same. And this, for example, this is the blue force gear. This is like the real deal. I also run these. These are little elastic magazine pouches. They're great. And they just attach to your plate carrier via the molly. And on the top, he uses uh, two admin pouches to store some little things. I usually don't use one as I think they can get in the way of the magazines if you try to reload. And attached via Valkyrie has some pen elastic pen holders and a grenade pouch. So we can see here he has like something like this going on. This is like a grenade pouch or something. And then there's the Velcro here. 
Then he has attached with Velcro some loops to hold like a pen or a flashlight. It's just, yeah, they try to make him look more cool, obviously. Coming to his jacket choices, the soft shell jacket he's wearing is actually a Helicon Tex classic army jacket. They do some decent stuff. I actually have some tactical pants with knee protection from them and I usually wear them for my op for loadouts. I like them a lot. They're not super expensive. And if you look here, we uh, type in Helicon Tex and then we can find the Helicon Tex man classic army jacket fleece line in different colors. I believe he either has like the, the gray or the black. Yeah, you can see it's definitely the one from the movie. This is like a, a cool little jacket. Don't fall for like movie props websites because they sell this exact same jacket for maybe triple the price. The winter jacket in the amazing one shot prison scene. <laughs> is I believe either a Carinthia Hick 4.0 or it's also the 511 Bastion jacket. That would make more sense as other gear is also supplied by 511 as they are actual sponsor of the movie. That makes a little bit more sense for the winter jacket. It looks really cool. The Carinthia stuff is like really high level, like extremely expensive as well, but it's definitely gonna work. The 511 would be more the budget option and is probably more accurate, but. Then coming to the belt setup, if we just gonna go and type in air, a soft uh, belt into the Amazon. We're gonna find very similar stuff really easy. He uses a yeah, very efficient belt setup. He even wears it over the fleece jacket, like he doesn't give a one. Usually the style of belt is attached like with a Velcro belt through the loops of your actual pants. You can easily put it on and off. I use the same time of belt every time I go to play, but if you go here onto the Amazon website, you're gonna find something very similar very easily where you get an inner and an outer belt. For example, this one, if we look at this, this has an inner Velcro belt, inner belt with Velcro and an outer belt with quick release buckle. So you attach all the stuff to the outer belt and then you wear on your pants the Velcro belt and you can dump the outer belt very easily if you have to go to the toilet. On the belt, he actually doesn't have that much on it besides a Kydex holster for his Glock 21, we're gonna talk about a little later, and an IFAC medical pouch on the back, a single elastic M4 pouch and a double pistol pouch. The M4 mag is for emergency reloads and I run it the exact same way. On the side of my belt, if I've emptied all the magazines on my plate carrier or on my chest rig, I know I have one last here and I can use that really quickly with without like having too much going on in front of your chest. Uh, if we're gonna look, this is almost an exact match on the IFAC uh, pouch here on Amazon. Blows out and you can put like different stuff on it. I actually have this one and I have it filled with like just some very basic first aid stuff. More like if people like hit themselves, get a scratch, I can put a plaster on them and I have some ibuprofen in there. It's just very super basic for some very easy medical attention. I'm not a professional. Leave the professional stuff to the professionals. These are the Kydex double uh, pistol uh, pouches he uses. They have like a retention system in them. Um, I have some of those. They are great. They sit like here in the front if you're right-handed and you have an easy quick and uh, quick and dirty reload from the front. And if you type in pistol pouch, pistol pouch, magazine you're gonna find a ton of stuff and if you look like the first thing that comes up is like a heart shell so to speak in all different colors he obviously wears it in black so that's super easy and then this is the elastic single magazine for m4 mags you have them in different you have them single double or triple they can go in the front the triple the double can also go on your side or if you only want to have two additional in the front and then something else that's all possible that's all up to you then he also wears some jeans in the scenes and some black pants and i'm pretty sure those are just regular 511 tactical pants uh, that you can find on amazon if you just type in 511 jeans you get a ton of options 
And he has some very bright ones. So here, technically, you either get them in stretch or uh, construction. Let's just go with the Defender Flex straight jeans. He wears a very bright one, so we need to check which one like would fit. But those are very solid jeans. So if you want to be super sneaky, you just run an M4 Mac in your back pocket and that's going to give you all the hood uh, points you needed for to complete the absolute coolest tactical operator challenge this year. I got you. Moving on from the gear he is wearing to his pew pew sticks, uh, because this is very important if you want to look tactical, because you're, maybe you want to play some airsoft. In the movie, he uses a Daniel Defense M4 V7S with an EOTech XPS3, a G33 magnifier, an NPAC 15 laser module, a mod light weapon light, a BCM gunfighter vertical grip, and a suppressor with a cloth cover and a Magpul SL stock. Okay, that was a mouthful, so let's break it down. He uses an MK18 style M4. Please, for the love of the airsoft guards, do not buy a replica off of Amazon. They usually are really low end quality. Make the effort to best go to your local airsoft dealer and touch all the furniture to see what you like and what you dislike. It's always better to save an extra 100 bucks to get something a little nicer that will not poop out on you down the road. But what Amazon is great for is to shop for some accessories you want to mount onto your replica. And here I found you the uh, hollow side actually it's this one uh, either single or with the magnification as a double so this is obviously a, just a single one i have one of those that those are great then here with like magnification i never run this like this because yeah, i don't like the additional weight of the g33 like magnifier because i also run cameras on there and they already make the uh, replica a lot more heavy there's a combo version here as well then in the front he uses a pack box i actually love them they look super cool you can get a dummy one that's like non-functional basically that just looks cool that maybe has a compartment to store a battery or candy or whatever and then there are different versions that have maybe a visible laser and or uh, infrared light and you have different combinations of like these repro pack 15 boxes that are not so expensive so just see what do you want and what's also allowed in your country because the laser ones are not allowed in Germany. Actually, I have one here. They uh, just look very cool. They attach to the front. If you want to take some cool tactical pictures, definitely put one on. And uh, yeah, this is like non-functional, but it looks dope. Uh, then I tried to find vertical grips and stocks and it seemed like they got all deleted from Amazon.com. That is a very interesting decision but I got you anyways. There are plenty on Amazon.de. Otherwise if you are from the US maybe check your local airsoft dealer or evike.com for example or maybe AliExpress. But actually, I tried to find them on AliExpress and I couldn't find any stocks or vertical grips on AliExpress. But here on the German Amazon, I can definitely find some uh, four grips if you want some. Just check your local Amazon or your local dealer or if you're from the S, maybe Evike or whatever other shop, there's a million. Then he also uses in the front a uh, weapon light. The original weapon light is pretty pricey, so I found you some cheap alternatives that also look cool and work. Uh, just be aware also of your country's laws. For example, mounting lights onto your replica here in Germany is absolutely forbidden and a um, big, big no-no. You, you can find some pretty cool red looking ones that are not so expensive like the real Surefire ones, for example, because those get really pricey. Then the sling rake uses is originally a Magpul sling that can be converted from a one point sling to a two point sling. I have it and I love it. Just make sure not to buy the cheapest sling you can find because you need to remember that if you have a quite expensive replica and you put it on a super cheap sling and the sling breaks on you, your replica will fall to the ground and maybe break or furniture will break so don't save on a sling that much that it's going to poop out on you and it's going to destroy your most valuable asset if you want to play airsoft just keep that in mind otherwise here this is like a replica of the magpul sling 
It's really cool. I love it. It has like a ring in the middle and then the other part attaches to the ring if you want it as a one point sling or you attach to either in the front and in the back. Actually, this one looks like it's currently unavailable. Let's see if we can find another one. It's, let's try Magpul sling. Well, this is the original stuff. This has the quick release, um, not like the clamps. I don't like these that much, so we're gonna uh, continue checking for some. This one looks pretty much like it. This is basically it, in dark earth or in green. Um, I'm pretty sure if we keep uh, checking, we can find also a black one, but this is basically it, and it's a lot cheaper than the Magpul versions. But make sure they actually like can hold the weight of your replica because you don't want to smash it to the ground. Then here are some of the same style magazines and uh, suppressor cover he uses. Um, this is a pretty cool magazine already. This is, almost looks exactly the same like he's using. Um, they are really good as um, like adapting to how the Airsoft magazines look like. You can get them in the bundle. This is actually unavailable. Great. Let's uh, see if we can find some mags that look like this. There's a million stuff you can find. PTS, the EPM ones, those are like the top tier level magazines. I, In my opinion, those are really good. I never had them. Um, uh, but they uh, work very, very good with a very wide range of replicas. So they have a very good uh, standing in the community. Uh, what you find looks cool if you wanted like the old school M16 uh, style. I've even some some of those and they are great. They, they still work. And then we have some suppressor covers with cloth or some laser cut ones uh, out of nylon. Do whatever you find the stylish. This one obviously is extremely expensive because it's a real one for real suppressor. Like uh, this one is like a replica. It also looks nice, mm. but you need to get your suppressor from your local airsoft dealer because you can't buy them on Amazon.com anymore. <laughs> Moving on to his Glock 21. It's also heavily customized and features a Trigicon RMR and a Surefire X300U. Consult your airsoft dealer about okay. Glock replicas because the rec replicas tend to be more expensive than other airsoft pistols as they have to pay a license to Glock. But here are some RMR red dots and two pistol lights where one of them is a budget option. Like a little uh, red dot that attaches on the back of your pistol, attaches to Glock style slides. It gives you much easier aiming down um, than using iron sights. I have one of those, but I don't use uh, Glock. I have the Norwich pistols and I love them. They're so great because they don't have that much moving parts as the Glocks because they have this dipping barrel thing. In my opinion, the Glock replicas are not worth it because they're usually more expensive than anything else. Then uh, for the weapon lights, these are the O lights. They're a little bit more expensive, but they work also on the real deal as I believe. They're really good. Actually, I bought bicycle lights light from them and it works great. Well, then we have a little bit more of a budget a version for 35 bucks um, that works with batteries. Yeah. It just attaches on the little slide in the, in the front of your trigger guard. And uh, there you go. Also forbidden in Germany, just for your information. So no torches on replicas. Now that we have a quick loadout out of the way and I gave you some examples on Amazon.com, let's jump into our top 10 Amazon finds for Airsoft. Uh, this is now already the third part I'm doing about Amazon Airsoft finds and I always try to find some practical items that can be helpful in a variety of ways and that I also own and use myself, like most of them. You know what I mean. Well, you know, sometimes I find good stuff and I don't buy it, but it could be good, but uh, sometimes I have it and I didn't buy it off of Amazon, you know? That's what, that's what I mean. So here is my top 10 list this year of airsoft items from Amazon. First off, we have an inlay for balaclava face masks. It looks like this. Yeah, here you can tell that it's like maybe something for airsoft, but this is totally not it. But this will protect your teeth uh, from BBs. So this was a really interesting find as you can use the balaclava you already have. You don't need to buy like an extra mouth protection. Like this one is the Kignos Armory face mask that I run. It's like a mesh material. And in the front, it has like a mouth guard with metal mesh so you can breathe through here but it will not destroy your teeth if you are running around with your mouth open because this is usually the case because of all the adrenaline that's pumping through your system you run around like this 
on not only looks cool, but if you have already a balaclava and you want to use that, this is an interesting inlay for just 12 bucks to try it out or to have just a scarf and then just put something over your teeth area that those are protected. And then I also found this one. It's called Tactical Shooting Mask Outdoor Breathable Half Face Mask Mesh mask and yeah it looks more like mask from covid times when we used to uh, have to wear masks all the time but it also has an, the same inlay as the one before so you can combine those two obviously yeah this could work actually quite well it's a little bit maybe look more low-key and you don't like this have to put your whole neck through it so that could actually be nice to not only just loop it around your ears it's maybe the setup is a little easier i should try this out we have a helmet battery pouch. I actually have my helmet here and I use these kinds of helmet uh, battery pouches a lot. Those is like the Mohawk style, they call it. And I have a power bank in here that is actually now powering the camera. And I found some newer versions here on uh, Amazon. This PVS 31 battery retention system. It's a little bit more on the pricier side, but it looks so dope. It's like some laser cut stuff. Yeah, this could actually be a very valuable upgrade to this one, but we can find this one also quit pretty easily helmet and then we're gonna type in pouch let's see what comes up that's uh, pretty much it already if you check this out uh, the first one and the third one those are already the ones <laughs> this is an exact match to the one I have and love because you not can only use this battery pouch as a counterweight for your heavy helmet but yeah you can just um, route also cables through that and yeah it's it's just very helpful we have a uh, airsoft bb tracer i have here now a pcu tracer so what is a tracer actually basically it's a very strong light that register a bb flying through and then there's special bbs that are glow in the dark and this thing shines a very bright light in exactly the time the bb is passing and yeah, then you have like these uh, very cool laser tracer shots. It's really cool for indoors because you can really tell where you're shooting, how you're shooting in CQB environments. It's really cool to see. Uh, if you play outdoors at night, that's also a dead giveaway of where you are. But I think um, this is a really cool thing that got a lot more popular in the recent years. If you go on Amazon, you can find the Acetec Bifrost. This is a very popular tracer recent in the recent yeah, year or so because it has an RGB mode. You can have all kind of different uh, colors and it flashes. It imitates like a, a muzzle flash in rainbow colors, whatever you want. And it looks really, really cool. But you have to make sure that your uh, airsoft uh, replica barrel is not protruding your outer barrel because if the inner barrel goes in here and then the thing can't register uh, the BBs flying through anymore, it doesn't work. This is what a problem I had using this one with uh, my Mark 18 HPA because the inner barrel is sticking out of the outer barrel. But you will have a lot of fun with a uh, Bifrost tracer unit. You just need to get like the correct biodegradable Degradable glow in the dark uh, tracer ammunition like this one 0.25 gram BBs perfectly fine for indoors actually I played at the uh, Mr. Airsoft field a very cool German field and they have a cap so no uh, more weight than 0.25 gram BBs makes totally sense for indoors I have the Plano cases I actually did a video about these about organization of your airsoft uh, yeah, gear, uh, accessories and all that stuff. And I just wanted to highlight this little ammo box as well as some of the other stuff. But this one for me is like so cool because uh, yeah, it's like a little ammo box and you can store all your BBs in here, your uh, little speed loaders. And this actually goes in a bigger trunk where I have all my gear in so they are not flying all around in that trunk box and I have everything together. So I only need that trunk box and I know I will be able to play if I bring a replica. It has my belt, it has my helmet, my boonie, my, uh, all my little stuff I need to go out and play. It's in there. Great, cool quality and they have a extremely big variety of different stuff. We can look up on Amazon here. They have the all-weather tactical gun case. I have one of those. 
They are awesome. I explained all about this in a different video. You can check it out in the top right corner if you want. This is the uh, storage trunk I was talking about. I have the smaller version. This one has uh, wheels as well. I have the biggest version with no wheels, but they are so worth it. I have it in the basement. Nothing molds in there. It's great. Uh, so go check it out. I have the Pistol Mag Reload Holder. If you run a GBB gas blowback pistol, you always have the problem that you have to have a little bit of a fingernail to get this all the way down so you can fill the BBs in here. And this, if you have to hold this over a long period of time, do it a lot, do it like in a quick rapid, like it can really hurt your fingernail. And I found this and I'm actually gonna order this because this is like a probably a little 3D the printed part that perfectly like sits in here and you can just slide it down hold it easily to refill your bb's with your speed loader this is like such a smart idea because it's not going to break your fingernails off like this person doesn't even have fingernails so i don't know how he would do it so i found two different versions this green one which also actually features now a lot of different colors over the rainbow and then i found a different one which is uh, currently unavailable so uh forget that we're gonna take the other one this is a thing i think everyone who yeah uh, shoots with a pistol can absolutely use this this is a super small thing that can go a long way because it might help you a lot down the road on spot number five, I put two items that are very dear to me as well. Those are red dot risers. What that means is that your maybe your red dot sits on your replica a little low. And if you wear a mask and you go to the airsoft field and you can't really find the red dot anymore because it's now too low on your replica that with your face mask on or whatever your setup is, it raises your eye too much of the replica. Uh, this is a thing to help you out. It raises obviously the red dot by a quite big amount and I love those. It makes it so much easier to find the red dot. You only have to lean in a little bit and it works just like an absolute charm. I have it for this one and I have a different one also for an, for an XPS style holocyte. Uh, these are a little different, but they do the same thing. They elevate your holo a little bit. What you have to keep in mind if you are in really close proximity of someone and you're shooting over a cover, you need to keep in mind that you might see the red dot on the target price, but your barrel might not be completely risen above the cover. Just keep that in mind. I did that a lot. Like I shot like right in the wall in front of me instead out of the window because I could already see out the window, but the barrel was not poking over. Anyways, there are so many of these now. Like every person in China basically does this for airsoft. It's um, yeah for, for red dot style like this one. Then this is the little part that goes underneath like an XPS style uh, holosite or any kind of holosite basically. And they raise it up by quite a big amount. It doesn't look much, but it helps you a lot. And that's why I'm including it in the list because I'm using it every time I go play. It's a very funny one, actually, because I'm wearing it on my arm right now. It's the Garmin Tactical Instinct watch, smart watch, so to say. And I love this for Airsoft because it can GPS track you, it can, you can connect it to your Strava and it gives you all kinds of different data. So whenever I go to a big event, I love to run this over a long period of time to see how much steps did I do, how much uh, ground did I cover, what were my extreme high heart rates and so on. And in the end, it even gives me a map with where exactly I walked on the game field. I love this. I use this every day, obviously. I have push notifications for like my iMessages and WhatsApp and stuff. Uh, works on here. You can track your workouts. Uh, the battery works for me for like two weeks. If you do a lot of tracking over a, like a whole day, basically, you need, might need to recharge at night to have the full next day covered with GPS. So this takes quite a lot if you do the track me function. I have a second um, little 
uh, time in here, so I can always spot the time that's in the US right now, and I have the sunrise and sunset time on there as well. I know a couple buddies got this, and this is a great watch, not only for day to day, but also for Airsoft, and if you go on Amazon, obviously if you type in Garmin, instinct you can find it right away and there are different versions now they have like a second version and they have like a solar version here i think this is the solar version the second one obviously a little bit more expensive but uh, it will charge while you're out in the sun that's pretty cool this one needs to go on the charger every two weeks or so I also have something that I don't own personally, but I'm thinking about picking up. And it's a tactical like plate carrier chest mount for your phone. So you can have your phone here, it folds down. You can maybe have one of those airsoft smart apps people are coming out with where you can see actual teammates. For example, Desert Fox events, they have this stuff where they can see objectives, your team members and all that stuff on an actual like Google Maps thing in an app. It's pretty cool. So you have that here, fold it up, it's protected. If someone calls you, you know, you can call your mom to pick you up and all that stuff really easily. And even this one and the other one I found have like a little window cut out for your camera, which I think is actually pretty cool. Of course, maybe you don't want that because you don't want a lucky shot onto your camera. But uh, for example, this uh, um, One Tigers one also looks really cool. Do for some very cool in-game footage. Uh, maybe it would be even possible to rotate it 90 degrees to have it sitting like in vertical mode to film just some in impressions from the game field or do like a little live stream or whatever. Maybe. Getting some clips from your uh, airsoft game day and share it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, getting this one Tigress one because this looks a little bit more they could also maybe be attached um, 90 degrees rotated. We have a helmet cover I found on Amazon and it's actually like a leaf cover you can cover your helmet in and I did actually have made one of those uh, in the very beginning with my first helmet build that I don't have here right now. I actually built this myself from like some camo netting and uh, bungeed it down onto the helmet in very different ways and it like breaks off the shape of the helmet. Those were very popular a couple years ago, then it died down and now it's really coming back that you'll see a lot of people uh, with these kind of helmet covers. Because it's also very cool on the field, you can identify each other really easily over like a quite large distance. So you can really tell, okay, that's my buddy because he has the same uh, thing on his helmet. And now they have like a really cheap option that is specifically built for a helmet that you can tie down with some uh, like elastic band. Those are pit vipers, you definitely have seen them before. Those are really stylish, cool, uh, like sunglasses. But these are actually rated uh, for not only Airsoft, but they have like an ANSI rating. It's the Z87 plus rating, which means I think they can withstand shotgun pellets, if I am not mistaken. With the side window here that protects your eye from the side, those are rated for play actually. And I played with these quite a lot of games already. And I got one sniper shot right here. Yeah, the emulsion, whatever's on there, got a little bit scratched off, but you can see that it withheld an absolute nice sniper shot that was a very well shot right in the face. I recently picked up a new one for Christmas. They look extremely uh, stylish, I think. I wear them in everyday life, of course, and then you can actually play with them if you feel like it. And I think that's pretty cool uh, to chrono your replica like this. I just like the style of it. It's like suits for my character, but there's a bunch of different ones uh, on their website um, in all different kinds, also with clear glasses, with even more smokier glasses and so on. But just make sure they have the ANSI rating, the Z87 Plus. U6S. So that's the actual rating that this will withstand an, a BB hit because they also have ones that are, don't have these side windows and those are not rated. Those are just normal sunglasses. These are like impact proof. Same with these. Those are rated too because they also have the side cover here on the side of your of my face. And if you go on Amazon, you can find s some of the Pit Vipers. They have the actual Pit Viper store on there. They don't sell the whole entire collection, but here you can see the guy um, he has no 
uh, side thing, so this is not good for play, but here these are ones are mine I have right here. And here they also say, it says in this description, Z87 plus safety rated. And then yeah, you can look at the pictures and all the stuff that comes with. And yeah, you ab absolutely look like a cool operator with these on. Just make sure that you don't get bamboozled into buying like a knockoff because if you type in pit vipers into Amazon, there might be some other stuff coming up that is not distributed by the pit viper store and those might not have the safety rating. Keep that in mind, you only have one set of eyes. Don't play with that shit. Always invest in a very good eye protection. But I have one bonus thing that is also available on Amazon, which I recently did a video on. It's the T2 Pro a thermal camera, which can be attached to your phone, either iPhone or Android. There's two different versions and it makes your phone a little thermal camera and it actually works quite well. I did a comparison video. You can check it out in the top right corner now. Works pretty well. I Last week I went to a hunt with a buddy of mine and I filmed quite a lot of footage. It was absolutely easy to spot stuff on there. We uh, looked at some hogs in his hunting grounds and this thing is really cool and a really easy budget option to get your foot wet in uh, thermal cameras. And I'm definitely gonna use that at some point in, during a night game to just spot enemy players at the horizon level. Or if someone's hiding somewhere in a dark corner where you can't see them, this will see anyone that's running hot blood in their body. But there you have it folks, my top 10 Amazon finds for Airsoft along with some cool gear inspired by Extraction 2. Check the description below for links to all of these fantastic items. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button for more Airsoft awesomeness. If you want me to break down some gear in a specific movie or series, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video a lot and you can get something out of it that I'm putting into it. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks so much guys. Bye.